Shout out to all the therapists, the psychologists, the psychiatrists, the counselors, all of y'all out there doing the work and helping people become better people by giving them the tools that they need to become better people. Shout out to y'all and shout out. I want to give a special shout out to the marriage counselors and therapists, girl, especially the ones who are dealing with heterosexual relationships. I want to send a special prayer out (laughs) to y'all. Yes, I know it is difficult work. Yes. Shout out to them. I just want to just give a special shout out this morning. I posted a woman on my uh, Instagram page this morning and she was talking about the performance and the construct of masculinity and femininity and how in society, of course, we ascribe behaviors and clothes and mannerisms to masculine and femininity. And that's not something that's innate. It is a social engineering or conditioning, if you will. And so when you're running around town trying to put people back into a box that they have made just for you, they got your name on a box too, bitch. So when you out here running around town on your platforms, in the comments, trying to reinforce behaviors, ideas, clothes, and ascribe them to people that have penises and vaginas and say, hey, you are supposed to show up in the world like this because this is what you are. So this is how you have to behave. If you're spending any time of your life doing that, cut it out. Okay. I need to put my glasses on and I need to roll some weight up. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. I have to start the video because I be trying to do so much and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it on video. I think you guys have gotten used to that by now. Like, I'm rolling the weed up or I'm cleaning my glasses, but I have to start. Otherwise, um, me trying to get everything just so the time just is not waiting for me. So I just need to start it and then we can just do what we need to do until we get started. So go ahead, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know that you stopped by. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for spending time with me. Yes. I am so thankful for you. I'm thankful for your comments, your engagement. Yesterday, the chat was so engaging and popping. I love how smart all of you are. I love it. I love smart people who think, right? Who think, who observe, who analyze, and then come to conclusions, right? And then with new information, you are able to change your mind. Yes, I love it. I love, I love y'all. I love it. So, girl, let's talk. I sponsored the. Now I sponsored the. Let me tell you something. I did save some stuff, but I'm gonna roll some weed up first. Well, first I gotta clean my glasses so I can see the reefer, and then I have me some mushroom coffee. Did y'all get your mushroom coffee? I want to try another mushroom coffee. I think I'm gonna try. I don't know. There's so many out there, but I got, I gotta do some reviews. I want to try Rise. Is there sediment on at the end of rise? Because with everyday dose, baby, you spin that right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, right round. <laughs> it's no sediment at the bottom, which I I love that. I don't like sediment because I do this hibiscus um, mango steam, um, like tea. It's in you know it's grounded up or whatever, and it leaves a lot of sediment at the bottom. So I feel like I'm wasting right. Um, I don't know. So I don't like, I don't like to have any kind of sediment. That's what, what that was my issue with, um, mud water is because it left mud at the bottom of your, at the bottom of your cup. It reminds me of that scene in breakfast club where principal, the principal says, um, that when he gets, he's going to get coffee and he's sitting at his desk and he pours the stuff in his, out of his thermos into the coffee 
and into the cup and it like splashes all over and he goes coffee looks like it's scraped from the bottom of the mississippi river <laughs> principal vernon yes yes Two weeks. I got you. Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. <laughs> well, I tell you, people do not like to watch um, Breakfast Club with me because I know when I tell you, I know the script, the dialogue, baby. It was it'd be like I, I call me Erica Hughes, bitch. <laughs> well, I tell you, but the Breakfast Club is one of my favorite, favorite movies. I literally know every line in that movie. I need to watch it. You know, that's something that I need to do. I do things to um, kind of test my memory, like to see if I'm losing my memory. So there are certain things that I remember that I've hold, have held on to in parts of my brain that I say, well, if I forget that, then I know that I'm, I'm losing my memory. So one of the things is the, the entire script of The Breakfast Club. I can literally go through it it's really bad anyway <laughs> it's really that's one of my favorite films john hughes i tell you his films pretty in pink they they 16 candles just made such a impact on a lot of gen x i know a lot of y'all can agree but like the breakfast club the brat pack they just really were just like ah oh, it's meant so much to me so much so much shout out to all the gen x kids and who loved John Hughes and sixteen who had in sixteen candles and all the all the movies weird signs was weird signs John Hughes no that was Christopher Columbus I think and um, Adventures in Babysitting was Chris Columbus as well um, Adventures in Babysitting is another one of my movies shout out to Elizabeth Shue and Anthony Rapp who else was in that everybody was in that um, everybody was in don't nobody leave here without singing the blues okay. <laughs> Ah, yes, that's my movie. Wait, Weird Science. Okay, hold on. Weird. Weird Science is. Uh... Oh, yeah, it is John Hughes. Yes, Weird Science is John Hughes, released August 2nd, 1985. I was. You know how little I was, girl? That was the first time I met Robert Downey Jr. was in Weird Science. Yes, Anthony Michael Hall. We love Anthony Michael Hall. Shout out to Anthony Michael Hall. Is he problematic now? Loved Anthony Michael Hall. Yes, all of them. So shout out to the Brat Pack. Shout out to just that little nostalgic moment. Shout out to all the Gen X kids. Anyway, so let me put my glasses on so I can see what the fuck I'm doing because come along with Gen X comes deficient um optical ability <laughs> girl <laughs> so let me put my fucking my eyes on my other set of eyes and it's so funny you know i grew up wearing glasses wearing frames all the time i always wore frames when i didn't need glasses i always used to wear frames always 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 that other microfiber cloth is this one right here this one right here so i did save some some things yep see this this is it right here this is the microfiber i need to put this i need to put this out of here <laughs> i do not want to use it again all right let me wipe up wipe it off i want i want these in do baby i tell you i want these in red they got every other color they have clear i might get the one i might get the clear ones because I like these, but these are old, an old prescription, so I can't really wear them. They're but just really for the, the reading part. I can't really wear them. I remember one time <laughs> I had these on all day, and baby, the sun went down. And I was like, God damn it, I have on the wrong glasses. I was trying to drive. Oh, my God, girl, let me tell you something. Absolutely not. So these are really just like on the side of the bed. Let me look. I, you know, look through. They're progressive. All of, all of my lenses are progressive. So yeah so <laughs> bifocals remember bifocals you'd be like what is that at the bottom of your glasses grandma 
because there used to be another space at the bottom. Technology has changed that you don't have to have the space at the bottom anymore for the different lens that lens can just progress. Isn't that amazing? Shout out to all the ophthalmologists and the ophthal ophthalmologists and the optometrists. Shout out to all of y'all that work in the eye. So we give a shout out to all the medical professionals, the brain professionals and the eye professionals. So shout out to y'all and the heart specialist for the uh, Breakfast Club, John Hughes uh, tribute. Anyway, so let's let's get down to the blogs, girl. Is I sponsored the, now yes. I sponsored the Let blog. me tell you something. That's enough of running my damn mouth. Still, still ain't rolled no damn reefer up. Why is it saying? Crazy when it happens when it what happens? What happened? They change and they finally ready to Hold on. Something's not. Them to treat you like years ago and you no longer even that person that wants them to change. By the time. Hold on. I'm trying to see. Are you ready to love me? I don't even. <laughs> It'd be so crazy when it happens when they finally change and they finally ready. What you wanted them to treat you like years ago and you no longer even that person that wants them to change. By the time you're ready to love me, I don't even love you no more. By the time you're ready to do right by the me that you think you got, I'm not even her no more. You got to re-get to know me. I did this quote on a video a while ago that says, the pain that he caused me changed me so much that I no longer even identify with the woman I was when I loved him. That pain gonna change you, something serious. So by the time you're ready to love me, you don't even know me no more. I ain't even her. <laughs> My whole fucking personality done altered. So who you trying to love? I ain't even her no more. You changed everything in me with all them years of dogging me out. You coming to the table with this, I'm ready now. And I'm like, good for you. But for who? Because it ain't me. You ain't ready for me. You can't even get next to me now. <laughs> It'd be... I said plot twist. <laughs> you never loved him. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was more likely infatuation or limerence. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. You never loved him, girl. You never loved him. It wasn't love. Whatever you were experiencing and calling it that, it wasn't that. And I think a lot of the times, a lot of the feelings that are being felt have other names to them and love is not any of those names not it's not like we literally need to get i need to go get that feelings wheel and be like this is what you're feeling because the word love i think is like we could get behind the philosophy and the concept like of love like love and romantic love and just platonic love and love and love and i love this and i love children and i love love we use love too much too much and i think when it's time to be in romantic kind of in intimate settings we use the word love and it's actually infatuation or limerence and it is a um what an idea of what you created coupled with society telling you that that the majority of these people have the potential right how many of how many how many of you operated on potential when you were dealing with somebody the potential of them the idea of them what it could be right even though you are witnessing what they're going to continue to give you they're not going to give you any more but this all this time it's just like i'm gonna stay until i can see what you could be and then when you do all of that and they realize like oh my god you know i am i i am this person and i could be this person and i'm a better person and then they discard you right that's where a lot of people get fucked up they're just like damn i was a i made you a better person for the next person and if that's how you feel then that's how you feel um but understand that that person, if they haven't done any work, and which is the reason why you're not next to them anymore, if they haven't done any work, then it's only going to play out on the next person and the next person and the next person and the next person. And then the next person will be like, oh my God, I see the potential in you. What could be, what 
what I envisioned my life. I can have you a play a part in, of that in my life. You know what I mean? Like you like assign a role to a person who is unqualified, unsuitable, unfit, all of that. But you have been socialized to see the potential and to see like, I have never heard of, and I remember thinking about this when I would see like, when I would witness and even in reflecting, me helping or giving advice to men on things that they are creating, right? So they're like using my intellect and my, you know, my uh, my uh, attention to detail. Erica, look at this. Erica, do this. Erica, this, this, this. Because the friends will do it too. Guy friends will do it too. Not just romantic partner, guy friends. I don't know if anybody has ever recognized that you do have some guy friends that will kind of use you in the same way um, and um, place you as, you know, like you you fall under one of the M's. You're just not a mattress or a maid. You might be a little bit of a mule, a little bit of a manager, right? The, right, like that, a mediator, you know, and they use you in that way. But a lot of the times, I think we just use the word love and it's like, it's never that it's not even that it's not even that. And then when you, when you get older and you're like, okay, the concept of love and what does it mean? Because me, I can honestly say I have told people I've loved them. And when I'm, when I reflect on the relationship, I'm like, uh, I think I was just saying that. I don't, I never, I didn't, I didn't, it was the, maybe the feeling that I liked when I was next near them, right? That's what I loved. Like, oh, I love how I feel when I'm around you, right? Until you no longer, until they no longer feel good to be around and you're like, I don't love you, you know? <laughs> it's not love, it's something else. It's something else. Somebody said, easy to blame men for everything. Somebody said, yeah, it's not all men, but it's it's always a man. I love that y'all are saying that now. Because I say it's, ne it's not all, but it's always some. It's never all, but it's always some. When somebody, it's not all men. Yeah, it's never all of them, but it's always some of them. It'll always be some of them. So yeah, yeah, you're right. It's not all of them. And then the ones who are the not all of them, they are always so quiet that you can't even really tell them apart. So it's like, what's the point? Like that guy, the, like those guys, those British black dudes who were down there with that fucking racist Jewish dude, uh, Andrew Schultz. Yeah. And they were down there talking about black women and everybody was so shocked that these natural protectors did not stand up and protect black women when they were having a conversation with a white man, a white Jewish man. Do you know how, how much niggas love to be in conversation with white Jewish men? Hi, Vlad. Hey, Vlad. Aha! They love it. They love it. If they can sit down across from a white man and feel like they're in camaraderie with him, Baby, they don't give a fuck what the conversation is about or who the subject of the conversation is. And I want black women, like I said, I'm going to read it. I want black women, I want you to sit with what I'm about to tell you. And a lot of y'all, because we sit in an intersection, a lot of y'all are always going like this. And when you looking in the direction that aligns with black men, you never, it's never, there's no reward that ever comes from that. There's no, uh, even, not even a reward. There's no reciprocity that come from that. There's no, none of that. So Farad and Rashad, whatever they fucking names are down there, shits and giggles, sitting amongst, don't get upset. I need for y'all, one, to stop asking men to protect you. That's one. What is the black girlfriend effect? This is oh, you don't know you about just glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend. All of a sudden, he's got buzz cut, like yeah, clean shape up. Nah, 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 yeah, 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 yeah,
because it's so stressful <laughs> yes. around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. <laughs> That's why they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow step, a beard they step because the there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I, think, I think the black girlfriend effect, hmm, it might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys, have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> We love them all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Just, really? We love them all. Yeah. That means white. Who gets here? That means white. Hey, let me know. No, you no. know translation. Kendrick fans, <laughs> get him! <laughs> we love them yeah, all. That's, yeah, that's yeah, royal English. For what, is the, what is the black girlfriend effect? Right? These natural protectors keep showing you. There's evidence for generations to show you that this is not a natural thing for them. Because if it was natural, then they would do it without being asked to do it. Do you understand? They would do it without being asked to do it, right? This is what I want y'all to sit on for a second. I just want y'all to sit on this for a second. I know I'd be saying some crazy things down here sometimes. And you'd be like, Erica, girl, I'm with you when you ride, but girl, you sound crazy as hell. I might sound, sound crazy as hell with this, okay? I want y'all to listen. This is in regards to Shits and Giggles host apologize after backlash for insensitive comments and failure to support black women on Andrew Schultz's podcast. Number one, they've deleted the apology video and they have deleted other videos, I presume, of them saying disgusting things about black women. The black British girls are saying, huh, these niggas are the average of what we're dealing with across the pond, girl. This is nothing different. They ain't no different. When, I, when we tell you there's a global dust going around it's true okay these behaviors are not exclusive to men on turtle island all over the globe where there is a land mass these niggas are acting the same okay okay men sit around and talk about women like that all the time it's nothing new all women not just black women should just release any support from those platforms and call their advertisers and have money removed from sponsoring their show your emotional triggered outrage has no currency none and it means nothing it's not gonna move nothing twist they motherfucking pockets if one thing black women know how to do is buy and consume. So the same buying and consuming that you do on, a, on an average daily basis, you can call the people and say, hey, the same way they like to call people and get their jobs taken away. You can say, hey, advertisers, they're on here being discriminatory towards a protected group of people. We would like their advertising pulled. Thank you. Stop trying to get men to see the value in women when they don't. Unless you are a maid, a mule, or a mattress, they don't value you. Women are the only ones who value men, and men don't value you, and they show you time and time and time and time again. And you stay trying to get men to figure it out. But you need to come to the conclusion that they do not like women they don't ever since they were little boys all boys have been taught the worst thing that you can be is what a little girl and guess what's going to happen when they grow up yes the worst thing that they could be is a girl or a woman so they have a lot of things to say about you these are the humans that have y'all believing that they are natural protectors if men were natural protectors and another man is sitting there talking shit about women that man would say hey bro that joke is kind of lame or i don't understand the joke shout out to Ch jessica lee she's the one that said i i do it all the time act like you don't get the joke huh wait what is it can you explain what do you mean by that what do you mean that the guys are losing their hair because of the, what do you mean by that? 
when you have to get a person to explain their joke that they thought was so funny. See, he thought he was funny. You could tell by his mannerisms and how he's shifting in his chair, Andrew, with his porn mustache over there. Yeah, you need to look into his fucking background a little bit while we're at it. Men will sit around and talk about women. Have you been in a barber shop? This is nothing new. And especially black men sitting across from white men. Girl, Vlad has a whole archive of black male degeneracy and the women who support it. He got a whole fucking file over there. You want you want any kind of archive on black male degeneracy? Go to fucking Vladimir. Go to Vladimir. He has a fucking cases and cases of files of niggas just running their mouth because they so comfortable running their mouth from across a white man thinking that that is their brother. Their brother. Yes, I say brother. They do it all the time. So it's nothing new. It's nothing new. Let's see what's down on the blogs, girl. That's what we came. I just so happened to have that. It was supposed to be posting to my page, but I don't know why it didn't post. But let me go. Let me go to my save and see what we have. OK, that's all I have to say about Farrard and Richard or whatever the fuck his name is. Then I tell y'all. Ruby Rose seemingly addresses romance rumors with Drew Ski claims he paid for a PR relationship. He is funny and nice though. I only give it up if I'm in love. I don't care much. I don't care how much money a nigga got. I'm rich as fuck laughing out loud. He is nice and funny though. And for the record, I never slept with that man. Nigga paid for PR, not the pussy. But you kissed that nigga who looks like he got a layer of plaque on the bottom of his teeth. You let him kiss you in the mouth. It ain't that much goddamn money in the world. I'm sorry. You let a nigga like that kiss you in the mouth? I told y'all that wasn't real. That shit is, well, I knew that wasn't real. Girl, what the fuck? You, you could tell by when he kissed her and then he grabbed her face to kiss her again. She looked like she wanted to vomit in her fucking mouth. Girl, let's see what some of the comments say. That's whack. You looked better being quiet about it. Contract breach, because why are you telling after being paid? Love don't cost a thing style. She's corny for this. But why is something you'd expose? If the relationship was strictly business, why, why not just take your coin and stay silent? Because when you think about it, you there's video evidence of you kissing Drewski in the mouth. You have to set the record straight. I was paid to do that. That's not something that I did willingly. Oh, yeah. We're going to set the motherfucking record straight. So while you have the video up there, out there of me kissing him, you're also going to have tweets of me saying, huh, I did not fuck that nigga at all, girl. It was work kissing him in the mouth. I wonder how much she got paid to kiss Drewski in the mouth and act like he was together. Girl, gross. Love don't cost a thing. Can't buy me love. Shout out to can't buy me love with uh what's his name um what's his name patrick dempsey and what's the girl's name that was in it i think wasn't sarah jessica parker in can't buy me love too oh no she was in um girls just want to have fun with helen hunt that's another movie Girl, shout out to all the movies from back in the day shout out to all the movies girls just want to have fun with helen hunt and sarah jessica parker yes that was a good movie too um and then pickup artists with Molly Ringwald and, and Robert Downey Jr. I'm thinking about all the old movies. But yeah, girl, love can't buy me love with Patrick Dempsey, where he paid an old girl to act like she liked him. And then she ended up really starting to like him and blah, blah, blah. And it's all all of it, all of it to make the guy seem like he's better than who he actually is. That's why Nick Cannon got so many babies, because he's really the corny dude. And now he has money so he can attract the simple minded bitches with the money. And, and get his corny ass to be to be reproduced because in real life ain't nobody reproducing with no corny ass nigga like that i mean the girls are reproducing with anybody you know but i mean that's another story for another day i knew that shit was a fucking pr stunt i knew it was fake ain't nobody kissing drewski who ain't get paid for it willingly girl give me a break give me a break 
let me see one. Let me see on the other comments. So he responds to Ruby Rose and he put love don't cost a thing with a picture of him over um, Nick Cannon's face. Girl, you stuck your tongue in that man's mouth. You liked him. She's so corny and he's so unbothered. Never spoke bad about you. This man is hilarious. His response is perfect mix of funny and classy. I'm confused. She benefited from Drewski's PR. He's selling out arenas. She's still trying to get a rap deal and selling pussy. What randomly made her start tweeting about him though? You rich as fuck, but you bought out, but being bought out for PR stunts, it's giving broke. Brokey. If you are rich as fuck, why is your companionship for sale? Okay, period. They're wearing you out, Ruby Rose. Kevin Lyles announces he's stepping down as 300 Entertainment CEO. It's time to pass the torch. I bet it is. I bet it is, Mr. Lyles. Mm -hmm. Remember Erica Lyles? You know she was married to Kevin Lyles from Potomac. The Erica Lyles that Giselle was throwing into Karen's face saying that Ray liked Erica Lyles. That's his wife. His wife. I don't know if they still married. But that's Erica Lyles is married to Kevin Lyles. Right. Shout out to Erica Lyles, girl. That's not Russell Simmons, right? They look alike. After they lost a lot of weight, they both look alike. Well, anyways, listen, from the he he wrote everybody a long thing saying thank you and God bless. Sounds sound familiar. Thank you and God bless sounds familiar. But um, he says he'll be dedicating his time making history by electing. Kamala Harris is the first African American female president, as well as holding the Senate and winning back the House, and make Hakeem Jeffers the first black, um, the first African American speaker. This chapter may be closing, but all, re but always remember the job is not done. Um, I have faith in the leadership. I want to extend sincere thank you to the people at WMG who have empowered our success. And then he thanks some people. So he's boarding a jet as we speak. Next time we're going to see that nigga, he's going to be in Bali. He's going to be in Bali. Okay, let me see what are the other things that I saved. Angela Yee buys apartment building to support formerly incarcerated Detroit women. That's awesome. Her and um, the Jasmine brand. Shout out to them. That's wonderful. It says radio host, radio host Angela Yee makes a bold move in Detroit real estate scene, securing a 30 unit building in the bustling Midtown area. Yee's vision to dedicate one third of this structure to serve as housing for formerly incarcerated women. It's about providing a safe haven for those who truly need it, Yee shared. The battle for adequate housing post incarceration. is a struggle many face. Joining forces with Yee is the Jasmine brand and Dr. Topeka Sam, the force behind Ladies of Hope Ministry, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uplifting women post-incarceration. Yee remains optimistic about the transformative power of the Midtown Project. She explains, I've managed to carve out my own path of success and financial stability, and it's only right I use my platform to uplift others. So shout out to Angela Yee, the Jasmine brand, and Topeka K. Sam. Shout out to y'all for doing that. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. I also said here, this is what I said about shits and giggles. I said this and I said I was going to read it and then I forgot. Okay, so I said this. I said, uh, once black women understand that black men do not care that you are black. They just need you to care that they are black. Okay? You sharing identity with them doesn't mean anything to them. Just you. When you drop your devotion to a social construct of race, you'll be better off. I know we stand in the intersection, but when you're looking for, hey, I'm black, come, you know, help me. 
hey, I'm black and queer. I'm black and woman. Come help me. Ain't, ain't nobody coming to save you. But when they get into trouble, it's like, hey, I'm black. Come save me. And everybody runs over there. Right. But when you black and gay, black and queer or black and woman and queer, don't let don't be black woman and queer. You girl, you on your own. But nobody is caring about the BLACK as much as you care about the BLACK. And they need you to care about the BLACK in order to protect when they have caused harm to other men, women, queer people, and children. Now they, now they hollering, I'm black, I'm black, I'm black. No, that doesn't matter. They need you to care about that, that part of your identity. And you do, you care so much about that identity, you jump up in front of BLACK man and operate from a place of race, even though they've harmed BLACK women, BLACK men, BLACK queer people, BLACK kids. So I'm gonna read this again. Once black women understand that black men don't care that you are black, they just need you to care that they are black. You sharing identity with them doesn't mean anything to them, just you. When you drop your devotion to a social construct of race, you'll be better off aligned with your gender. Men submit to other men all the time. Men sit around and talk about women all the time. All the time. All the time. That's why I said, let them talk. Let them talk. Let them be comfortable in their arrogance. Let them be comfortable in their camaraderie of manhood because that's what they're, that's what they're connecting over, manhood. And what better way to show that we are men by talking disparag disparagingly about women? That's the way that they connect. Let's talk about our hatred of women. While we still try to have sex with them, let's talk about how much we can't stand these bitches. I'm just saying. A lot of these men only see the value in what and how you can labor for them. Maid, mule, mattress, medic, meteorologist, right? That's funny, but on some real shit, how many times have you heard a nigga say, I just need you to be the peace in my storm, nigga. I ain't got time to be on the goddamn North Pole trying to figure out what your mood is going to be. And that, in, that, that mood, always being moody and switching is a control tactic. Please understand that. He asked him, do they date black women? This was eye opening, eye opening. You would never ask a white man, does he date white women? Yes, yes, you would. I would ask um, the little Keebler elf with the shrimp dick down to the um, Tamar Braxton. I would ask him, do you date white women? But they don't care, it don't matter what color you are. They are disparaging women, you understand? But you're like, oh my God, they're black men. They should be protecting us. Since when have they? I'm ask, I want to ask y'all. When are they? So I need you for y'all to stop asking your natural protectors for protection. They have duped y'all and lied to y'all. These men are not your natural protectors. It's a way to get you in close proximity to them so that you can provide labor and DNA duplication. That's the grift. And I'm glad some of y'all are waking up. I'm glad you guys are waking up because they don't care that you're, that you're black. They need you to care that they're black. That's all. Because as soon as something happens to them where they have harmed people who look like you or people who look like our black queer brothers and sisters and non-binary brothers, siblings, they always... I can't believe y'all celebrating a black man going down. Girl, I don't give a fuck what color he is. That's y'all who care. And they need for y'all to care so they can hook you in. And then you are operating in the vortex of blackness, running, 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 running. 
But when it's time to run up for you and stand up for you, they got to see, I got to see all the evidence first. I don't even know. What did, what did she do exactly for our ass to get put into a blender? What did she do? What did she do to him to make him click like that and punch her in the face eight times at a daycare center? What did she do again? That's what they need to, they need to find out. We need to wait till all the evidence comes out. That's what they need to do. Still haven't rolled no damn weed up. Anyways, I think we should go, huh? Should we go? What else did we have on the Jasmine brand? Let's go see. Um, another one, Tupperware plans bankruptcy filing in coming days. No, not Tupperware. Diddy and Kim Porter's twin daughters reportedly back in Los Angeles being cared for by Kim's best friend. Good. His teenage daughter, 17-year-old Delilah and Jesse are currently in Los Angeles under the care of their late mother, Kim Porter's best friend, Lala. She's been the caregiver for several years, although she is not a legal guardian. The girls are attending school in LA and Lala oversees their day-to-day -day schedules. She does her best to protect the girls from outside noise and acts as a mother figure to them. Meanwhile, Diddy is currently in New York going through an indictment and court proceedings after being arrested and indicted on S trafficking, racketeering, and kidnapping charges. He has pled not guilty, but is being held without bail. Let's continue to pray for the twins during such difficult times. Said Cassie didn't think about them, huh? I hope tomorrow at school they're protected and all the kids don't bother them. They deserve to walk with their head, heads high. They're kids and it's not their fault. Their dad likes baby oil and other super freaky shit. Hey, let's get, let's, let's clear this part up. This thing where, you know, they keep mentioning sex, 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 sex. And we know that's how to get a lot of people's attention. And everybody is so fascinated with other people's sex lives, even though when it's gay people, they're like, we don't care what y'all do in your bedrooms. So everything is sensationalized with the sex, sex, sex. There's nothing wrong with sex. There's nothing wrong with sex parties. There's nothing wrong with getting freaky. There's nothing wrong with lathering your body with oil and, and making the scene look really sexy and, and having the lube so everything can go in easy and slide in it. There's nothing wrong with none of that. It's when it becomes not consensual. It's when it, it's when it, it involves minors. It's when you are traveling over state lines, okay? That's what makes it a crime. There's no crime in having sex with consenting adults. None. Shoot the fucking movie. That's the problem. See, I'm sure there are so many people who would have consented to be at these parties. Yeah, I wanna consent to have a party. We having sex and filming movies and stuff like that. And our bodies are all, all oiled up. We gotta, we gotta make a scene, we making a scene, it's a movie. That's what y'all be saying. It was a movie, it was a movie, we making a movie. But knowing that once people get high and drunk, and then now that you film them, you are telling them, Oh, I, 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 I need you to do something else because I got you on film now, bitch. I need you to do something else and I need you to come back next Friday and the Friday after that and the Friday after that. And we're going to do the same thing over and over until I'm done with my movie. There's the problem. There's a problem with injecting women with drugs that will immobilize them and film people doing unimaginable things to her body. That's the crime. The sex is not the crime. It's the violence and the sex is the tool. Understand, it's the tool to inflict violence, to practice power and dominance, to um, intimidate, to coerce. That is, sex is the tool being used in, in addition with the violence. holding people against their will. He, the way he grabbed Cassie and was dragging her back, that, is, that would be, kid, if he was able to get her back into the room, that would be kidnapping. When people want to leave and you're not letting them leave and you telling them, hey, I already got you on video, fucking doing, un, doing the craziest shit. Come back next Friday or I'm releasing this tape. It's gonna find its way to the motherfucking internet. 
Those are the crimes. This sensationalized over people using body oil and then people asking, oh, girl, they using bo- they using baby oil. Y'all act like y'all ain't never had sex and put the baby oil on. And and so your bodies could be moisturized and look nice. I don't I don't understand. And people be acting dumb. Baby oil and lube. Baby oil is for the, I don't know. Yesterday I had to explain it so many times because people were acting like <laughs> like little prudes about baby oil girl you know the baby oil you can't use baby oil as lube it's gonna mess up your ph girl no we're rubbing it on our bodies so we can film this scene come on stop acting dumb and slow we grown baby oil is for the scenes for the scene you never seen it have you ever watched the movie where people are having sex Don't their bodies look nice and glistened and oil and sexy and sweaty? It's the baby oil. So nobody's using baby oil as lubricant. We're grown people. And these are grown people having sex. Nobody's using baby oil as lubricant. Come on. And then it's, to me, what really bothers me is that, that, like, it's so funny. Like, do you know what what he's doing? He's doing these things frequently. He's film, he's a voyeur. He's filming a movie and he's using this, these films as a way to blackmail people to do other things. Sex is just the tool and y'all just want to party, do a little coke, have a little good time and stuff like that. That's what y'all came to do. He got another plan for y'all. We taking the phones, we locking the doors. That's when the crime starts. Nobody goes up to have a good time and then get held captive against their will. Nobody signs up for that. People sign up to have a good time. I'm coming, I'm coming up here to have a good time. I just came to dance for y'all. I didn't come for all this. I did not sign up for this. Nobody signs up to be abused. Nobody. This is not this unless they are going to go to the BDSM place and get their back stepped on by the girls with the spiked heels and stuff. That's different. But this is something totally different. Sex is being used as a tool and and men use sex as a tool. While you think that man is making love to you, he's using his dick as a way to stab you. And you, oh, oh my God, it feels good, harder, harder. Yes, he is not acting out of passion. He is acting out of fucking you with his fucking tool. And that sex is being used as a way of power. They don't even want to look at you. I just need to know that I'm stabbing you and I need for you to scream like it hurts because that's what I want to do to you. I want to hurt you. And I'm using this dick as a weapon. Y'all have got got to stop acting so daft. I cannot stand when people act dumb like that. Grown people, people who have had sex. I'm tired of y'all acting like you don't know what the fuck it looks like. Baby, y'all, yo, yo, oh my God. Girl, that's gonna throw up your pH bell. Ain't nobody using baby oil for lube. Just like with that Shannon Sharp shit. Oh my God, he's having sex. Well, aren't you? I mean, unless you're celibate, you're practicing celibacy or abstinence, but most people have had sex before. Most people wanted to, ah, girl, most people wanted to look like a fucking movie. They want the whole shit to be set up nice. But once you start tying people up and making them do stuff that they don't want to do, that's when the crimes start, girl. When As soon as you put a motherfucker on a plane and go across state lines and have and make them have sex with somebody, that's prostitution, kidnapping, trafficking. Soon as they asses got on that plane and they traveling back and forth, like that white girl who w- accused her Pierre and somebody else she couldn't name. I, I feel like it was Aaron Hall. I don't know why, but I feel like it was. We don't know who it was. She do- doesn't remember the other person. But all three of them fucked that girl, raped her, and put her on a plane. Trafficking. All these people coming out with lawsuits. They wait. They like wait a minute. It sounds like he's trafficking people. He's t- doing having people do things against their will and then blackmailing them. That's a crime. 
it's not a crime to have a sex party with consenting adults. That's not a crime. People do it all the time. There's probably one happening right now. That's not the crime. And I think we're clear. I think we should be clear on that. The way that y'all operate on such low levels all the time, but when the conversation is about sex, everybody acts like, ooh, ooh, I can't believe it. Oh. Everybody starts acting like they're 12 years old. I don't get it. Oh. We know good and goddamn well they're not using baby oil. He's using it to slather the people up because he's making a movie to use to intimidate people and blackmail people. Call Kalina 54 times. Kalina, I don't know if you need to come out again and be like, y'all, I was under duress and I lied. Yeah, you need to you need to flip that because now everybody's looking at you like, girl, ain't nobody standing on the side of this nigga and you came out to defend him and then call your home girl. The girl you were in a group with, call her a liar and say that that wasn't your truth. That wasn't your experience and you were with her the entire time. Are you telling me that he only inflict that type of pain? on Don and because you had an abusive husband, have an abusive husband, he didn't allow some other man to abuse you because he was already abusing you? Was that part true? Kalina, you look, you look any woman, especially a woman coming out and lying for a man, treasonous. You need a letter on your chest, sweetie. You need to come out and flip that and be like, he called me. He was calling me 54 times. I felt like I didn't have, I felt like I didn't know what I was going to do. That's witness tampering, like potential witnesses. And everyone is a witness. Everyone, everybody is. Everybody. We taking everybody's passport. The mama, you the main one. You need to be the first one on the stand so we can get a history of this Sean, John, combs and his little pointy eyebrows his little devil eyebrows little demon your demon child when did you recognize that he was a little devil that's what we want to know janice what else i think that's it why can't Quincy take, Quincy went back home. He was at the court the other day. I saw him at the court in, the, in a picture. He was down at the courthouse. Quincy went back home. The party is over. He's back home with his father. Somebody in the comments was like, Diddy stepped up when Al B. Sure didn't. Diddy is more of a man. Diddy killed his motherfucking mama. Shut your ass up. You can't tell me the measurement of any goddamn man who stepped in to help some kids and then turned around and killed their mother. I don't want to hear shit. Everything he did before that, he before they he killed Kim Porter is a wrap. I don't give a fuck what he did. Once you kill the, the mother, you being a man has nothing to do with nothing. Oh, Puffy, he took care of Quincy. He took care of Quincy. He stepped up when Al B. Sure couldn't step up. He made sure those kids, nah, nigga, he was probably terrorizing the motherfucking kids. The party is over. I don't know what them people are going to do. I don't know how they, the mother, I don't know how she's going to live. I thought about her when I saw a video of, of him and his mother going around this morning, hooked up to IVs. And she's talking about, I love you, baby, looking at her son. I love you. And there's documents that say that he has abused her as well. Every single woman that he is around, he's abused. And for some reason, y'all think Jesse and Delilah were exempt. No, they weren't. And when they get old enough, they will speak. They always do. They always do. So Grandma Janice was not even an option? Hell no. Somebody said, who Kimora? It says Lala. All y'all got to do is read. It's not even that long to read. It's like from here to here. And y'all refuse to fucking read it. You just read a headline and leave a comment. It's crazy. It is crazy. 
Cassie confirmed as a witness in Diddy's federal case could testify. Jennifer Lopez, we need everybody. We need everybody connected to Sean Combs as a witness. Everybody. Everybody. Let's look and see who we need. Who do we need? Who do we need? Al Sharpton, LL Cool J, Russell Simmons. Who else? Who else? Tommy Lee. Uh-huh. Sanaa Lathan. Janice Combs. Mm -hmm. Howard Stern. Beyonce. Jay-Z. Chris Brown. Nick Cannon. Mm-hmm. Ashanti. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All the people. Ashton Kutcher. Justin Bieber. Little Kim. Uh-huh. Everybody. Jay, did we say Jay-Z already? Mm-hmm. Jacob the jeweler. I know he's seen a lot. I know he has seen a lot. The ultimate party boy. The party is over, honey. The party is motherfucking over. Let's see what the let's see what kind of remix we going to get to this, bitch. I got to go. Anyways, y'all, Mike Tyson, all of them. All of them. Can't stop, won't stop. This the the train has pulled up to the station. I am actually, I'm actually so glad to actually witness this. I can't wait until we get a trial, until we get a verdict and a conviction. I cannot wait. I hope they put Puffy away for 120 years. And I hope everybody gets on the stand and tells the truth. Just tells the, tell the truth. If you cooperate, all the things that we saw you on it, because we saw you on the tapes. They already saw everybody. They've watched these tapes. So we've seen all of y'all. So come on in here and cooperate with us and you won't, we'll make sure that you are protected, right? There's a lot of people like, ooh, child, I'm so glad he is away calling 50, calling somebody 54 times. That's crazy as hell. Anyways, y'all, I got to go. Let me see if there's any new updates on Sean Combs. Because it, this is going to just, be, this is something that we're probably just going to continue to continue to talk about, continue to talk about, continue to talk about. Yep. Just keep it, just remember, it's not the sex that's the issue. It's the using sex as a tool along with the violence. And that's, that's what is happening. And that's what, and a lot of people because sex is such a vulnerable type where everybody has to 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 fall in line with some sort of kind of submission like we have to work we're working together in this act um it allows a space it allows you to be vulnerable and be used and be you that's why it's like so important to just like be aware of the surroundings, know when, and, and, and unfortunately you can't even give anybody like they take your phones and lock the doors. You're trapped in there and you're like, what the fuck? And then it's like, here, take this, take this, take this, take this. Mm -mm. Remember the sex is a tool used and it's always sex. And if you ever notice it, they always use sex as a way for power, dominance, control, blackmail, intimidation, always using sex as a tool, always using it as a tool, always using it as a tool. All right. I got to go. It's almost an hour. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Peace. I didn't even roll the weed up, but I'm about to. Peace.